All right, so follow-up question to go along with the conversion we learned and to talk about how rotations change over time, basically complete the cycle. We want to talk about angular acceleration. So angular acceleration is kind of like regular acceleration, except it's something that's spinning in place rather than, you know, say driving forward or, or flying somewhere. Um, because it's a special set of circumstances and, and the units are different, we get different letters. And unfortunately, these are Greek letters. A lot of times students don't like those. But angular acceleration, we have alpha, which is the version of A that, you know, kind of looks like a little fish. And that is equal to a change in angular velocity. And then again, here's one that students often don't like, but angular velocity is represented by the lowercase omega. Lowercase omega kind of looks like a fancy W, but that's it's actually an omega. That stands for angular velocity, so basically how fast around something's spinning. And then at least the bottom simple change in time. Technically, everything else is Greek because the triangle is the Greek letter delta. But, you know, we'll make it through. The question overall is not too bad. Um, if we're trying to get a top to spin at a certain RPM, we want to think of it. We started at zero. We're going up to that number. So zero RPM. And trying to get to 3,700. So... We're trying to get to radians per second squared, and right now we've got RPM. If we can get from RPM to radians per second, just the regular ones, then we're, you know, most of the way there. So let's do the conversion like we saw before. So we'll start with 3717 RPM. So we'll have rev on top of one minute as a way to stack and, and aid in the conversion. Um, like last time, to be more consistent, hopefully dealing with things with which you're familiar, We'll start with getting to the seconds. We can't get the seconds squared until we use the whole formula, but we've seen where we can go from minutes to seconds and, and build into this work. So one minute is 60 seconds. Um, the revs part is not useful for the final answer. So like before, we have to remember that revs can convert to radians, which again are the weird units that are they're kind of like degrees, but uh, much different size and, and related to pi. All right, but one revolution is two pi radians. All right, and then just like before, you can run this through the calculator all at once. So 3717 times two times pi divide by 60. Minutes and minutes will cancel, revs and revs will cancel. We've got radians and seconds left, so that's great. We get 389.243. And that's radians per second. So that's our angular velocity, which again is omega. It kind of looks like a fancy W. And we go from zero to this number. So technically this ends up being chains in omega, but it, it's not going to hurt. I don't really have space. Then bring this thing over. Bring the time from the question. And all that we have left is very, very simple. So the 389.243 radians per second goes over the 0 0.186 seconds. At first glance, you may want to take the seconds and cancel them, but remember this is being divided. That one's also being divided, so they end up working together. And we get, I don't know where the M came from, but we get radians and these get collected per second squared. Then taking and dividing those numbers gives us a little less than 2100 to 2092, roughly 0.71.